This is Rick. He makes sculptures out of marble, and he loves robots. The first step in creating a marble sculpture is to choose a block of stone for carving. The artist has a collection of marble pieces he acquired from quarries all over the world. A quarry is a pit where stone is cut from the earth. In selecting a piece of marble, the artist looks for fractures or flaws that may cause problems while carving. He does this by tapping on the stone with a mallet and carefully listening to the sound. A more solid piece will sound different than a piece with a lot of cracks. He also pours water on the marble. Water makes the cracks darker and helps him see even the smallest imperfections. Most artists get inspiration from the stone itself using the size, color, and feel to help determine the form. The Renaissance artist Michelangelo claimed that his job was to free the form trapped inside the block. Once the artist starts carving into the marble, he can't put the pieces back together, so having a careful plan is really important. Keeping in mind the characteristics of the marble he has selected, he starts sketching his design. Then he makes a model or maquette, often out of sculpting clay. A maquette is a scale model, meaning it is smaller than the future marble sculpture, but has the same proportions. After sculpting a maquette, the artist creates a pattern using a piece of paper. He places this directly on the marble to get the correct size. Then he draws details from the maquette onto the pattern, which he'll then transfer onto the stone. Next, the artist punches holes in the pattern so that he can mark directly on the marble. He uses special tools called calipers to keep the same distance between areas on the pattern and areas on the marble. After marking the sculpture with the major lines of the form, he's ready to carve away the largest portions of the unwanted stone. This is called roughing out. Tools are really important here. To cut large, deep lines into the marble, the artist uses an electric grinder with a diamond blade. Yep, there are actual diamonds on the edge of the blade, making it extremely sharp. Then, to break off pieces of the marble, he uses a chisel with a hammer or a chisel with a pneumatic tool. Be careful! Large chunks of sharp marble go flying through the air. Throughout the carving process, the artist continues using the pattern and maquette as references. And when needed, he draws details on the marble to help him determine where to carve. These pencil marks will later be rubbed off. When the general shape has been formed, the sculptor uses other tools to refine the figure. A toothed chisel creates texture, and smaller pointed chisels allow for finer carving. These small files, called rifflers, are used to enhance details like areas of the face. After a lot of chiseling and filing, we're finally ready for polishing. The artist uses different grade polishing pads. These are better than sandpaper. Like the blade used earlier, these pads are covered in tiny diamonds. Pouring water on the surface of the stone keeps the pads from overheating and burning out too quickly. With so much friction, they could get really hot. The water also washes away the fine dust material caused by polishing. This wet polishing technique produces a super smooth finish. After polishing, the artist sometimes mounts the marble sculpture on a base made of marble or another kind of stone. And now we have a finished piece. So what was once a block of marble extracted from the earth is now a carved sculpture.